can cool gadgets like these supercharge your creative skills? With the amount of menus, submenus, and sub submenus in creative programs, it can be time consuming to navigate the program with speed, and knowing the keyboard shortcuts is absolutely essential. With this in mind, perhaps a cool programmable input device might help. So you're not darting around the menus or keyboard for that matter to make things work. In this video, I'll be dissecting the different input devices like these to see if they're shortcuts to creative mastery, better suited for experienced users, or just a complete waste of money. I've tested all these different input devices in lots of different programs. Blender is my 3D program of choice, Photoshop, Premiere, and lots of others. So I'll be reviewing the different devices with that consideration. So I'll start off with the Torbox. Now this particular version is the Torbox Lite, and it's an input device which you can use on the side of your keyboard and program the buttons for different uses. This particular one is the Torbox Lite and it's $95. So they're not particularly cheap, but they're not too expensive. You can get bigger versions than this with more programmable buttons. But the great thing about this is that you can combine the buttons, so press two at a time to do different functions. It's got a nice dial here and a twiddly knob, and it's got different size and shape of buttons so you can easily identify them without looking down at the device. It's also programmable for different programs so you can have a different set of keys in Premiere than you would something like Lightroom. It's actually got presets already built into the software for programs such as Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, and so on. It hasn't got any presets for 3D programs such as Blender or Maya though. And I think the reason for that is that generally speaking, I wouldn't say we use dials or twiddly knobs so much. We use a lot of different buttons. So whether this is suitable for 3D programs is debatable. I personally haven't been using it in Blender. I have been using it for Adobe Premiere to edit my videos. I think is quite quick in that sense and is quite helpful. If you are going to use it with a 3D program, then I would go for one of the bigger ones with more buttons because that's more suitable for those type of programs. The next one on my list is the Lynxware. This is a really interesting one to me because it's designed like a mouse and you hold it in both hands. You can have one or two, and I feel like these are more suited to a 3D program. The reason being is that there are so many buttons and that suits a 3D program more in my opinion. What really interests me about this one is that it's an open source project. So you can buy them and they're sort of pre-built like this. They are 3D printed and they go for 150 for one or 250 for a pair. So they're fairly expensive. But if you're that tinkerer, hobbyist type and want to build these yourselves, then you can download all the information you need from their website. Now, I think these have a huge amount of potential, but with all these things, including the toolbox as well, you do have to spend some time learning the buttons and deciding which button you want to go where. This does actually take quite a bit of time and thinking, and particularly for this sort of device where there are loads of buttons, it will take you a lot of time. The frustrating thing for me was that this is so new and so early in development that the build quality doesn't quite feel there, because it's 3D printed. The software was a real pain. I couldn't install it on either of my computers. The virus software didn't like it and my computer didn't like it very much. So I had lots of issues trying to get it going. And that's why I think this is very suitable for the hobbyist. Perhaps those that are a bit more technical minded, I'm more of an artist, so I don't really have the time to delve into these things and get to grips with them. But I do feel like this is the one that had the most potential for me. The next on my list is the Space Mouse from 3D Connections. Now you can get just the mouse for 126 pounds, or you can get the mouse with loads of buttons for 269 pounds. I'm afraid I don't actually have one of those to show you because actually I couldn't get used to it and ended up getting rid of it. So it's a viewport controller that you use a bit like a joystick, and it's really only for 3D programs to move around the viewport. I used it several times trying to get used to it, and it was really nice and smooth to sort of flow around the viewport in such a way. However, I never really felt that comfortable with it, and in the end, just stopped using it altogether. I can see it is a device that lots of people would find useful, and I've heard of people using it and being really happy with it. But for me, it didn't really work out. I like the fact that it had lots of buttons around the controller, so you could kind of use it with one hand and then use the buttons. But again, I think I'd rather just go for a toolbox and use just an ordinary mouse, or in fact, a display tablet, which I'll come to later. If you're finding this video useful, then please do like and maybe subscribe to get more content. And I'm interested to know if there are any input devices that you're using that I haven't mentioned in my list. So the Space Mouse is from 3D Connections, and I didn't particularly like their mouse, but I do still use their keyboard. And the main reason is because of this. It has a separate numpad. And if you're a Blender user, you'll know how useful that is. The numpad in Blender is really helpful, but it's nice to have it on the left-hand side. So having a detachable numpad like this, where I can move it from 
the normal side, which is the right-hand side for some reason, across to the left-hand side is extremely helpful. Also with the 3D connection keyboard and numpad, you get these programmable buttons at the top, sort of function buttons that you can use just like you do the tour box buttons. It's not quite as good as the tour box because they're all in one place and completely compact, but it is useful to have these buttons that you can program for different actions that you might need in your programs. Next, let's discuss your mouse. In my experience, I felt it's not really worth it going really expensive with a mouse. This particular one is a TechNet and it's a Bluetooth wireless mouse. I don't actually use a wireless mouse for my main system. I have a plug-in USB mouse. I find I have far less problems. It is, however, easier to have a wireless mouse with your laptop, of course, because it's a bit more portable. Extra programmable buttons on your mouse will help for different programs so you can do different actions once again. I don't actually tend to worry about that too much. I tend to just use the keyboard commands, except for things like Premiere, where I find the toolbox is a little bit more helpful because they're all compact in one place. The reason I don't like to spend a lot of money on a mouse is because they seem quite fragile devices and no matter how much I spend, they do seem to go wrong after about a year. The TechNet is the first mouse I've had that hasn't done that and it's lasted longer than a year. So that's why I'm sticking with this brand for the moment. It's a fairly cheap brand and it does a good job and I'm happy with it. The next input device I want to mention is the drawing tablet. So you've got a tablet like this and you draw on it and that moves your mouse across the screen. You can also get display tablets where you actually draw on the screen, which are even better. I've got a separate video on these if you want to learn more about them. But the important thing to mention here is what their uses are for. For me personally, I would only use them for drawing programs or photo manipulation programs such as Photoshop or specific areas within a 3D program such as sculpting or texture painting. I've seen some people attempt to use these instead of a mouse whilst modeling, and I really don't think that's effective. I would rather use the mouse for all sorts of modeling inside Blender or Maya or anything like that, and just jump to the drawing tablet when I'm sculpting or texture painting. But I do think these are absolutely essential when it comes to sculpting or texture painting within a 3D program. You can do those sort of things with a mouse, but it is much more difficult and much more time consuming. It goes without saying that within drawing programs, you'll certainly want to use these if you are drawing or producing any sort of artwork. Perhaps not so much for photo manipulation, you can do that with a mouse, but it is helpful to have a drawing tablet. It's worth also saying at this point that you can get display tablets like this that are much more portable. You can use a USB-C, so you only have to have one cable. They do drain your laptop's battery a little bit more, but they can be used as a second monitor as well. So I really do like the fact that you can have a portable, screen display tablet. This particular one is from XB Pen. They're my favorite brand because they're not too expensive and the drivers are relatively good compared to other of the cheaper brands. So do these devices make you a better artist or better creative practitioner? Well, no. They do have the potential to make your life easier and they do have the potential to speed up your workflow. With all these devices, apart from the mouse and keyboard, I suppose, you do have to put some time in to program your different buttons for the different applications you're using. Like I said, with both the Lynxware and the Space Mouse, I couldn't quite get on with them because they're a bit too overly complex for me. I currently am using the Toolbox Lite for editing and trying to get used to that to speed up my workflow there. The one area that I'm still searching for to improve and speed up my workflow is sculpting within Blender. I find that every time I want to go to a brush, I have to lean across the screen and choose the brush and then back to my drawing. And I know that sounds like it's not a lot of work, but when you're doing that over and over again, it can get quite tedious. And I do need to speed that area up. I would like a device such as the Lynxware where I could press a different button for the different brushes. But that is the only particular area that I find is kind of blocking me or slowing me down. And that is the key to try and identify areas where you're slowed down in your workflow. And if you find those, then you can look for a device that you think will speed it up. So don't rush to buy any of these particular input devices, figure out the bottleneck that's in your workflow and then think whether this device is going to help you. Like I've said, I'm very interested to know what different input devices you use or have tried in the past. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.